antenna training. Each station finds optimal antenna configuration with its recipient using a two-stage approach. So, first we start omnidirectional, then we find out you are roughly in this area, then we go into that area and do exact much narrower. Because if we do much narrower in the beginning, then I have to do a lot of efforts. Right? So, I first take big area and then divide maybe four and then divide into four or something like that. So, we do in two steps. So, first we do sector level sweep. So, I can divide 360 degrees into four sectors or three sectors or whatever number of sectors. If I divide into three, that is 120 degrees. If I divide into four, that is 90 degrees. So, I first try to figure out which 90 degree you are in, which sector you are in. And then once we find out the sector, then you find out which direction in that sector you are in. Sector level sweep, it sends in all sectors and find the optimal sector. And then beam refinement procedure finds inside the sector what period you are in. So, this is the sector level sweep. Um, initiate a sector, it sends a frame out and, um, and then it gets the feedback, responder sweep, responder is also, see, the thing here is the interesting thing. I am trying to find where you are and you are trying to find where I am. So, you are going to be then go, go rotating around and I am going to be rotating around and at some point we will meet, we will, we will be able to hear each other, right? So, this is the initiator, this is the responder, this is the feedback and the act, okay? And now we know exactly which sector we are in. Yeah, question. Oh, this is all few millisecond. You know, I mean, thing, thing is, um, this is um, could be done in microseconds and milliseconds. So it is not seconds, and there, and there is no physical movement either. So there is nothing rotating. It's just electronically rotating. All right, here is a picture which is better be, better depicts this thing. So. This station has decided that I am going to have two sectors and I'm going to try one and two. And this station is also deciding two. And then once they decide which sector they are in, then they will decide subsectors, which part of that sector you are in, right? Depending upon the position. Right now, as I've drawn the picture, I think this will succeed the first one. Everything else will be less power. Yeah. Yeah, see the thing is that would be much, much, much lower quality. I mean like the thing is the reflection will kill it. Direct signal will be much more strong. So, so frequency will not change that much. But the thing is, um, uh, I mean because we are going to do it in the same frequency band that we are in, right? But um, if we are moving then yes. If, if you are moving, then the Doppler effect will change the frequency and other things. But everything else which is not direct will be lower speed, lower amplitude. Okay. okay. So, so here is what I what is meant by sector level and subsector level beam refinement procedure. So this is the sector level sweep, and this is the beam refinement. All right. So this is like a binary search, and um, and then actually, I mean, the signals that we are sending, they are properly coded so that you know who is sending, who is receiving, what direction they are sending, what direction is being received and all that. So you can figure it out that you are talking to the right person. Um, here is a, another example. So the initiator and left has three antennas with three, three, two sectors. Okay. So notice this one. This thing has three antennas and first antenna has three sectors, so 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3. These are the three sectors. One antenna can move into three sectors, right? Second antenna has three sectors, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. Third antenna has only two sectors, 3.1 and 3.2. So, not all antennas have to have equal number of sectors. So, on the TV, for example, very few things will be talking from the back. 
most of the things will be talking from the front. And so there is no need to have too many sectors in the back and the front we want to be much more precise. So that, that's the idea is that basically not every antenna configuration will have equal number of sectors and the sectors could differ from antenna to antenna. So 3, 3, 2 example. The responder right has three antennas with one sector each. So this one has only one sector, one sector and one sector. So initiator performs three sweeps with eight frames, each using a different sector. So the eight frames are these eight frames. One will go here, one will go here, one will go. So you can see three plus three plus two, eight frames. And it will do this three times. Because first time, hopefully it is trying to talk to RA1. Second time it is talking to RA2. Third time it is talking to RA3. So basically, all possible combinations have been tried. After these 24 combinations, we will know which is the best direction for antenna. For this one, so it will know that it should be the antenna 1 in configuration 2 sector 2, right? And this will figure out that this is antenna 1, sector 1. So we try all possible combinations. First, the exchange, okay, I have three antennas with the so many sectors and this one says I have these so many antennas with so many sectors and say, okay, all right, so let's do this many exchanges. Yeah. So these different antennas for receiving transmitting? These antennas, okay, so all the antennas do receiving and transmitting. That is given, right? I mean, you don't need a separate antenna. Okay, and um, and if it is an antenna, it is doing receiving and transmitting, right? So you can have you can have multiple antennas, right? And you can have them facing different directions, and you can divide those directions into sectors, right? So some antennas they just whole thing is one sector. For some antennas, they can do this, this, and this. Oh, no, nobody is a receiver. Everybody is a receiver and a transmitter. I mean, the thing is, it will be difficult to think of something that doesn't transmit anything because it has to transmit an act, right? So, in this configuration as here, I just arbitrarily assume that this is a transmit initiator and this, actually, we don't even use the word transmitter. Initiator and the responder. So, whoever says, okay, I want to transmit to you something, can we align our antenna? Right? So initiator is the, whoever takes the lead. Right, and they are both, and, and this one actually in this case, yeah, they are. This is transmitting and this is receiving, but um, I think the same configuration, or if you want, you could do the other way around too. Generally, the same configuration will work in the other direction. Sometimes it doesn't actually, and in those cases, you will have to do different one. But in this case, I think most likely it will work. Okay, in some cases where I will then we come to. The, other cellular networks, in cellular networks, they use different frequencies for uplink and downlink. Okay, if you do that, then, then you have to do it in both directions separately. Here, if you are using the same frequency, then, you know, they will have the same behavior. All right. So, now you see what new comes up with millimeter waves. Right? Directionality is a lot of problem. Directionality was good, but directionality has its own cost. What if there are many PBSs in the same area? So they overlap. This is called a cluster. So now what will happen is this is one little network in this room and this is another little network in this room. They will get together and say, look, we got to use this thing together. So we are a cluster. Okay, in the cluster, one PCP will try to do things so that it doesn't affect other PCPs. Other PCP will try to do that they don't disturb other people's PCPs. So that is what the cluster is about. So overlapping PBSs avoid interference by, by electing a SPCP, synchronization PCPs. There is another boss on the top of PCPs. There's another boss who says, okay, all right, PCP number one, your turn, PCP number two, your turn, PCP number three, your turn. All PCPs select the beacon interval to be an integral multiple of that selected by SPCP. So now everything has to be aligned, synchronized, right? So you get 
one slab, you get two slabs, you get three slabs, but everything has to be multiple of slabs, so that it's easy for us to go back and circle again. Okay. Yeah, otherwise, if you do 1.5 and you do 0.3 and you do 3.3, you know, we may not come back to the same number, right? So, integral multiple of that selected by SPCP, non-overlapping Deacon transmit interval, and all PCP allocate service period in their schedule for BT of all other PCPs. So, what that means is Deacon transmission of all other PCPs. All other PCPs here, all allocations and avoid overlapping scheduling. So, now let's go back here. So, when I send my beacon, I send my beacon to my people, but also to the other PCPs. Okay? And they know that the station 1 is going to be transmitting, has been allocated to transmit to station 2 in my this one, right? So, if their station 3 is right there, they will know not to disturb that part. So, there is a lot of coordination required among PCPs for simultaneous transmission. And so, e, the, all the PCPs here, other PCPs allocations. That's what it means here when it says, all PCPs allocate service periods in their schedule for beacon transmission of all other PCPs. So, every PCP has to hear every other PCP. So, it's like this. If there are stations, there are managers and there is a senior manager. Managers have to know everything what other managers are doing. If they don't know what other managers are doing, you know, they could mess up. All PCPs here are all allocations and avoid overlapping scheduling. Okay, that's another function. No, no. So, basically, SPCP could be a PCP also. Similar question. So, SPCP is a function that could be done by a PCP and a station. So, in one particular box, you could be SPCP, you could be PCP, and you could be a station as well. Now, spatial frequency sharing. This is another new concept with H, with, with uh, 11 AD and actually with 60 gigahertz, not with 11 AD. 60 gigahertz and that applies to all of the other standards as well. That multiple transmission may be scheduled on the same frequency at the same time if they don't interfere. So, if I am talking here in this direction, they can talk in that direction, they can talk in that direction, they are not interfering because everything is very directional. Right? This could not be done with A 11N to C, A C, A, A B C D to A C, but it is A D. Now, everything is directional. So, you could have multiple transmission in the same room, in the same network at the same time and the same frequency. And PCP asks station to send results of directional channel quality during an overlapping service period. The stations measure the channel quality and send to PCP. So, what that means is that if I allocate station 1 to talk to station 2, at the same time ask station 3 to talk to station 4, after you guys are done, tell me how was it? Did you hear a lot of interference? Did you hear a lot of interference? They say, no, I didn't hear anything. Then I'm okay. Then we know that okay, these stations are located such that they can be allocated in future. If they say no, 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 there was too much bad, you know, this is bad. Then okay, so now we won't give you same time as them. So basically, we learn after the transmission, we learn what was the quality, and you report it to the manager. Okay, you cannot see the thing is now because it is directional. If you want to do multiple stations, what do you have to do? Well, I mean, either relay it or you know, you have to just change the direction. Multicast is not easy. PCP then knows which station pair can share the same slot. So, after few trials, we know who can be given to, who can, who can talk in parallel. Now, there are relays. Relays have the same function. They take receipt from one station and send it to another station. It is quite possible that this station cannot talk to that station directly because there is a dog sitting in the middle. Right? We, we saw that picture. So, there is no direction that they can talk. So, there could be a relay in the middle. Again, a relay does not have to be a separate uh, box. It could be a function, which could be in every box. But then somebody could relay the frames. So, link switch relay, MAC relays that, that act like a switch. 
they receive complete frame from the source and send to the destination and link cooperation relays which act like a hub. Now, I don't know how many of you remember the difference between hub and the switch. Anybody knows the difference? Now, this is nothing to do with the wireless. In the Ethernet days, we had the Ethernet hubs and Ethernet switches. Does anybody remember the difference? Yeah. And, uh, switches That's a good one. Yeah. So, he says that one sends the signal to all the ports and the other switches don't send it to all the ports, they just send it to the right port. So, actually another way to say the same thing is that hub is a layer one device. It doesn't know the frames, it doesn't know the destination, it doesn't know anything, it just knows the bits is coming in and goes in every direction. So, it's a physical layer device. Right? And if the frame is half, it will send half frame to everybody. The switches are smarter than that. Switches take the whole frame in, look at the destination and send it to that place. Right? So, that is the difference between here relays. Link cooperation relays and the link switch relays. Switch relays will receive the whole frame and send it to the right direction. Cooperation relays will take bit by bit and send it. I mean, it doesn't be bit by bit, but at least it is not by frame by frame, it is less than a frame. Very little buffering. All right, so there are two kinds of relays. So that brings us to the end of 802.11 AD. And seven key points. First is that centralized scheduling. Only PCP can send the beacon. It sends beacons in all sectors. So it has to send it multiple times. Then there is a super frame, which is the beacon interval, which consists of the beacon time, associated frame and the beam farming training time and the data transfer time. Announcement time is used for to collecting the request and the data transfer can be pre-allocated or by contention. Antenna training is a two-phase process, sector level and beam level. And then um, there is this spatial sharing, parallel transmission and there are relays. Okay.